All right, give it up for Andrew Lutz! I grew up in Iowa. <laughs> Apologies. Um, uh, the thing about Iowa is it's a good 20 to 30 years behind everywhere else in terms of popular culture, in terms of fashion. If you want to understand why the U.S. is so behind in global warming policy, it's because you let the people of Iowa vote first in the primaries. <laughs> we want a president who can solve who shot Jr. Millennials <laughs> ask your parents about that one. Um, but Iowa uh, had one thing we did way before everybody else. We were hit with one magical thing. Uh, you know those buildings that people sort of upcycle into trendy spots? These industrial buildings in the Rust Belt. Right? You know, this is a this is a glass works that has you know uh, corporate offices and and you know. Uh, uh, tech and a gallery eating. This is a, a bottling plant that has an indoor cycling track, and, uh, Thai restaurant, 17 yoga studios, hot, cold, medium, all those things. <laughs> so Iowa, in the 1980s, we did that first. The first one, I think. I'll pretend it was. It was the first one I saw in the 1980s. <laughs> we had a guy who, you know, bought an old factory building and renovated it and made it ready for all sorts of shops and, you know, opened it to the public. The only drawback was, the only building in Iowa was a meat packing facility. It was a slaughterhouse. And this guy leaned into the theme. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the gate, you go up the gate, it was all welded together meat hooks, you pass through it. Um, you know how other places they've got like, oh, this is the mementos of the industry that used to be here. They had that too. I remember the one photo, it was just a hand, all these little orbs in it, and you look at the like the caption next to it, pig pituitary glands. <laughs> oh. So this is where my parents took us for birthdays. <laughs> uh, uh, and by that point, it had already stalled as a business. It was only a dead mall. It, it, it worked out that Pittsburgh Mills theme really well already. And every floor had only a single operable business. So you'd walk in through the meat, meat hook curtain, <laughs> And, you know, the first floor, there'd be this track on the ceiling where they'd sort of slide those slabs of beef around. You're standing in a line, you know, your mom in front of you, your sister behind you, you're like, oh, no. <laughs> it got really creepy as a kid. Like, I got very afraid to go here. The first floor had a barber shop. I remember the big poster of possible haircuts, both bowl and buzz. Um, and this is like the 19, you know, this 20 years behind, so we're talking 1960s sort of trends here, 1984, and so it looked like, you know, the North Korean sanctioned haircuts man. I remember standing there looking at this, like, chart of haircuts, and on this side, cuts of meat, and this is how we slice you. Poor child, I'm getting afraid. Uh, you take an elevator from floor to floor, and you climb the elevator, it was rickety, an old industrial elevator, and the floor had a big grate to catch all the effluvia that it called the carcasses. Oh, cool. Go up, and of course this elevator was old, and so it opened at every single floor. The second floor was a costume store. And, you know, like, a, look, a costume shop, people make a lot of jokes about Spirit Halloween, and you know, it's creepy that it takes over businesses and stuff like that. I assure you that the costume store that's open year-round in the former slaughterhouse on a floor that's deserted is far more frightening. 
they put all their costumes on the various sort of discarded mannequins in some of the other storefronts. And like, you know, you'd be like, what is this? And so the like, door, door come up, the elevator would open, you'd like lean out, and you'd be like ghostly and cold, and you'd see like the mannequins there, and they're wearing those old fashioned plastic masks that cut your lip of like weird 60s stars, like Mama Cass. And you'd be like, what the hell is this? Up, up, up! Or folks. Get to the third floor, doors would open up to a mom and pop Mexican restaurant that was just delightful. <laughs> Great food, wonderful. We weren't stopping there. <laughs> we were going to the penthouse of terror. A Chuck E. Cheese showbiz pizza ripoff <laughs> called Pizza Peddler. <laughs> and at Pizza Peddler, the central attraction was the enormous animatronic coyote lashed to a tricycle <laughs> that would slowly bicycle around the room to deliver your pizza. Because he had this big tray in front of his little tricycle, which he was chained to. And he had a sort of speaker in his chest and a head that would jerk back and forth, mouth that would flap. He'd make his way over to the you know, poorly lit ski ball games, and come over towards your table, and he'd get there just next to you, and he'd pull up, and then, you know, the kid in the back controlling him with the remote control would, like, move it back a little, like, it just right at your table. And your hot pizza's there, and all your friends. And he would pause, and then, where's the birthday boy? <laughs> And if you don't believe me that uh, this place existed, um, uh, I believe my sister's in the audience tonight, and she can confirm. Um, but uh, I'm really glad that my sister's here, just like I'm glad that all of you are here, because um, uh, you know this is a benefit for uh, suicide prevention. And there was a moment when I needed information about that in my life, and my sister was the one who gave it to me. And so I'm really glad that all of you are here supporting this great cause. And so please, talk to your friends and family. Tell them, talk openly about this stuff. Because if you don't, I'm going to leave a coyote tied to a tricycle <laughs> in your place. Thanks, I'm Andrew Locke.